Hello, Thomas Lowe here, and I'm a landscape designer in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, I will be giving you some tips on making a fountain out of concrete blocks. What I have here are several different types of concrete blocks. This is uh, cap blocks, and whether you're making a small fountain, as we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do today, or a larger fountain, I would really recommend using these cap blocks. You can use the larger cinder blocks. Uh, cap blocks don't take up as much room, um, but you can use either one. So what I did was, was I went to one of the home centers and purchased several uh, cinder blocks. I actually purchased uh, about six of those and also purchased two cap blocks. And the fountain will actually go here. This is a multifunctional. It's a bench and a fountain in one, and I'll show you how to uh, put this together. Uh, I highly recommend uh, construction adhesive. This is fairly inexpensive. You can get this at the hardware stores, home improvement centers. Um, this is super to hold uh, the, the cinder blocks to these concrete blocks. Now, before you attempt this design, this is one of my original designs I did a couple years ago. Uh, you really need a flat surface uh, to put these on. You'll need a, um, a balcony, a patio. These are great for um, urban designs, patio designs, um, anywhere on a flat surface. So first of all, choose a flat surface. Uh, pick out however many blocks you want. In this case, uh, uh, there's six um, cinder blocks and two cap blocks. Now, also, something that will help uh, make sure that it, it's almost perfectly level um, are the little runners that you put on the bottoms of uh, chairs and furniture in your house. You can get those at the um, home improvement centers. So I've cut these actually in um, some triangle pieces, but you actually can buy some, you don't even have to cut. And stick these to the bottoms of the cinder block. And also it sort of creates a little bit of a shadow at the bottom and that helps in the aesthetics. So go ahead and fasten first, before you do anything, fasten all of these runners to the bottom of your blocks, with the exception of the cap blocks. The cap blocks seem to be just a little bit longer than these cinder blocks. Now, what I did, this is already glued. This, is, this has been on here for a while. First of all, you take this block and then you turn it on the bottom And then you take your construction adhesive and don't put the construction adhesive towards the end. Actually put it on the inside right here and on the inside part. That way when you go to put these cinder blocks on the, on the end, it doesn't ooze out here. It actually oozes more on the inside. And you want to leave the cinder block um, for at least a couple days, you know, two or three days to really cure and dry well. So once that's done, this becomes one whole piece. Uh, so just in a quick review, put your runners on the bottom, glue with construction adhesive, the uh, cap blocks to the cinder blocks. And the next piece is, if you notice, there is these, there's these grooves in the bottom of your cinder block. Now, make sure that these grooves, you have the grooves, because some cinder blocks don't always have these grooves, but make sure they have grooves in the bottom. And what happens then is you can get this metal piece that I purchased uh, in a popular home center. They're, they're pretty popular. You can get this in the hardware department. But this is a metal piece and it fits perfectly in the cutout of these cinder blocks. Now, the reason for this is, one is aesthetics. Uh, the second reason is, uh, is it also causes you to line up these blocks almost perfect, just really in, in the right uh, form. And now, it's important too to know how wide you want these concrete blocks are apart. For aesthetics, I kind of left a little bit of a gap, kind of tapering to smaller gaps. So. I went ahead and set up the blocks first and then went back and put this piece. And this piece comes 
in um, I think anywhere from four to six feet, uh, some even longer than that. So you can cut this with a hacksaw because this is actually pretty tough metal. So you can cut that with a hacksaw to fit. So once this piece is on here and this locks together, then what you do is you come back, take these other pieces, This piece just goes right up there. This, this design, I happen to want to keep them side by side. Now, for your, your fountain, for your smaller fountains, what I did was I found a small plastic garbage can at a retail center. And you may can go online and Google small plastic uh, garbage cans. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you get the right size. You want to measure the distance between your cinder blocks here to make sure you get the right size of the trash can. And it can be a little bit smaller if you can't find the right size. And then you can take the top off. I actually uh, used my hand pruners to cut the top out here. And then this actually is going to be your shell so that your water is stored in here. Uh, also, um, you can go to a pond supply company or uh, one of the retail uh, stores and uh, home improvement centers, garden shops, and get a very small pump. And you want to get a uh, tube that can go on the end. There's uh, tubes that are sold that will stick down into here. That, uh, that way you can get the water coming up here and you don't have to have one but in this case I put one on here and then you have your plug-in so what you do is just uh, first you take your pump and you put it in the bottom of the fountain and then I took the, the plug-in cord and I ran through So it fits right there. Now, so that you get this the right height, the comfortable height for you, I recommend taking a small bag of sand, a bag of flour, um, put sand in a Ziploc bag, a big Ziploc bag or a small one, and fill the sand, the bag of sand accordingly so it adjusts. And put this in the bottom of, of the area between the bottom of the small liner and the open space to adjust the height that, that you want. So then you go ahead and just pull any slack. There's a little bit of an opening here. Now, this plug-in can run behind the bench. You may need to get an extension cord if you don't have a plug-in close by. Then, in the same home improvement center, I found some small pieces of sheet metal you don't have to use these, but I use this for uh, decoration purposes as well as uh, to keep some debris um, out of the, the pond, the little fountain. So this, I, I used some tin snips or heavy duty scissors. Um, you might can use uh, garden hand pruners, but I think uh, tin snips works the best. And you can just bend that at the right uh, width you want to form whatever shape. And then this just slides between the liner and the cinder block. You have a little bit of a, a snug fit. There it goes. Now you've got a little bit of a cover that will sit on there. And I cut it so that the tube will still stick up through the top. And then you'll have the water to shoot through here. And if this is too long, you can adjust it by cutting this tube or not even having a tube on here. And then you can also have a bench where 
you can sit here, you can put flower pots on this side, or you can sit uh, several people. This sits about two people here or, or three, maybe three children. So I hope this is uh, giving you some ideas for a small uh, concrete uh, fountain with cinder blocks. There's also some larger ones you can build as well, but just use your cap block and your land landscape adhesive. My name is Thomas Lowe and I'm a landscape designer in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you.